hi, it's your meme mom. So I was like, what's gonna the next video be? Let me see. And then I realized you guys really like when I'm judgmental about things. I like hanging out with a vengeful bitch. But at the same time you don't, cause then you're like, you're judgmental. So I was like, I'm a try. To be honest though, I've been thinking about this video for a while and I never got around to doing it because I felt like it's a controversial topic in a way. Like I feel like a lot of people could be offended by me not agreeing with them. So, so let's do this. <laughs> so let's go back in time. In 2015, there used to be like this huge boom for all kinds of like hundred years off videos, the whole format was started by Cut, so they made a series of videos kind of showcasing different beauty standards in different countries and different eras and I think they were the first ones that did this and since then a lot of major media outlets were like that sells so they tried to do the same thing. In 2015 I remember watching those and the first thing that always came into my mind was how little research was done or even if there wasn't the research done the stylists killed the research and I was like as a person that was a little bit interested in fashion history at the time I was like why would you pretend you know stuff when you don't and I did my own video which was triggered primarily by this but also by the fact that all of these were kind of like showing the high fashion and it was always the fun way and I was like Fashion does not always look like that, so that's why I made my own video. And then Kat didn't really like that, apparently, uh, because the video went viral and they took it as it was kind of like a personal offense that I was kind of pointing out what they did wrong, which I actually did not because I just pointed out what they didn't do, which is why I thought it would be important to kind of fill in the gap. But I never pointed out all the inaccuracies that they had because I didn't want to piss them off too badly. So today I am going to judge those videos harshly and I'm going to say what's wrong with them and what's good about them. I just wanted to say that I do understand how much work goes into videos like that. It's a huge amount of work and I do understand that they have done the research kind of, you know, it's still impressive that they came up with these ideas and they made them. It's it's usually, it's not the maker's fault, it's kind of like those miscommunications between the people making the video that then uh, turn out to be bad. <laughs> so what pisses me off is not the people that made the video, but the fact that those major media outlets are kind of respectable, you know, like we respect them, we believe that what they show is true. So I made a whole playlist. So we're gonna start off with Cut's video about USA fashion. Okay, for some reason, the very first decades of 20th century are the ones that are always the worst in every single video. I have no idea why that is, because they're quite simple to make in terms of hair, you just need to look at the photos, but people just always seem to think that old stuff is not sexy enough. And I've noticed that so many times people are just like, especially stylists are kind of like, we need to spice it up a bit. So here we have a very messy hairstyle with some loose hair sticking out, which I think if it was supposed to look like something from the era, it might kind of look like Evelyn Nesbitt's hair. She was an actress and she had some like sexy style pictures where her hair was kind of like loose but no one would ever go out like that like check out the, the actual photographs from the era oh my goodness it's i'm just wondering how harsh can i be because i don't i don't want cut to be mad at me again but this is not a good hairstyle it could work better if it was supposed to be 1930s because that's when they kind of had this fluff. To be honest though, I don't understand why you wouldn't hire a vintage hairstylist for a video like that. Uh, especially for the first half of the 20th century because it's really not something that you can do well without 
former training. So why would, do they always hire modern hairstylists that have no clue because that's not what they were trained in? This actually looks like my hairstyle in the video I made in 2015. It's supposed to be 1930s and let me just say I knew it was bad the moment I made it because it was so messy and because you could clearly tell my hair were pinned up. This is another, another thing that I think is the reason why some of those are really bad is because it's really hard to differentiate the hair length in one video and hair lengths changed dramatically during the 20th century. But there are some tricks and there are some hairstyles that could work both for short and long hair and this is just not one of them. Yeah, this is much better than the previous one. It kind of resembles uh, 1930s. You know, you have the finger waves, you have kind of the, the right length and the hair does not look like if you pulled it up and tried to pretend it's short. It's, it's kind of, this one is okay. The victory roll should never have a hole in it. Like, show me a single picture like from the era of a girl wearing a victory roll that is kind of see-through. That should never ever happen. That's the first thing that a vintage hairstylist will tell you. And also, no one wore eyeliner in 1940s. It's kind of more of a 1950s thing. Show me a single picture of a person from 1950s looking like this. I'll wait. Okay, so first of all... Uh... Okay, moving on. 100 years of hemlines. Oh my god, is that an authentic dress? That is an authentic 1910 dress. That is very nice. Glamour, well done. No. So the, as I mentioned in one of my videos that you guys kind of liked but also were arguing with me a lot, uh, in 1920s you would not show your knee unless you were a prostitute or a dancer. So that is kind of untrue, although I do think they have an original dress here, it's just too short for the model. Crept up to the knee, well if, if that means covering the knee then that's kind of true. That again is an original dress, I am actually impressed with this video, this is really good. And the shoes are original as well, I think. 1950. This one is a bit like stereotypical 1950s, but it still works. I mean, the length is right, and that's what the video is about. This model looks great in 1960s. Yeah, that's that's a good length. That's the right tights. No, this video is too good for me to like judge it. I need to find something better. Hundred years of beauty icons. What the hell is that? Is that Josephine Baker? Okay, so the hair is not too bad. She is so pretty, damn. The dress though, it looks a bit too modern to me. Like it gives me this kind of like prom dress vibe. And the shoes are totally wrong. See, this is what they often do in those videos. They have modern shoes by really expensive brands and it's a secret ad for, for those shoes. So I don't know if you knew that, but most of the shoes they have are like really modern and expensive shoes and those videos are kind of like secretly advertising those shoes. That's what I've noticed at least. Oh no, oh hell no baby, no. This is very wrong. First of all, you're going for like Katherine Hepburn badass slacks wearer style. That's more 1940s. Second of all, this this suit screams modern. Why would her hair be so long if it's supposed to be 1930s? This outfit is just plain wrong. Oh my goodness, what on earth is this? What is this? This is, oh, Ava Gardner is going to raise from her grave and beat you up, baby. Everything about this look is plain wrong. I'm beginning to believe that Allure is the one that has worse styles, whereas Glamour is actually doing the, the good job. 1950s. You know, if you're if you're having your model wear a wig, why don't you get the one that has lace in front so it actually looks believable? I'm just so sick of those fake Marilyns everywhere. You just you just put a poor you know, blonde wig on and you're like, 
I'm Marilyn, but no, like, you have to put some effort into it, maybe just st try to style it properly. I mean, I'm, I'm actually happy they did this look and not the white dress. Liz Taylor. <sighs> That's not even about fashion, though, like, it's kind of like Halloween costumes, like, it could work as a Halloween costume. Evolution of hats. What is this? What is this? On er what on earth is this? This looks 1960s. They had this style of hat in 1960s. This is so wrong. Unless they're going to squeeze it after. Oh no, baby, no. The cloche hats were really low and they were really fitting around your he head. Really tight. And they would c almost cover your eyebrows and they would cover your ears. And they would not be that tall. <laughs> See, this is the, the reference picture. How could you not tell that the hat in the video is almost twice as tall? No, not really. Like, this, this is not really what they wore in 1930s. Sometimes I think what people don't get is that it's not only about hat, but it's also about where you wear it. For example, you had pillbox hat both in 1940s, 1950s and 1960s, but in each decade and in, it, in each like sort of era, you would wear them on different places around your head. So for example, 1940s, you would sort of have them towards your forehead and sometimes asymmetrical. In 1950s, you would have them usually either straight or also towards your forehead. And then in 1960s, you would have them pulled to the back of your head. So it's not only about getting a vintage hat, but you also need to figure out how to wear it. And it's also really important what sort of hairstyle you wear it with. See, on the, on the reference photo, it's worn in the front and on the sides. So why would you pull it on the back of your head? I, I have a feeling this hat is worn sideways. This one is supposed to be 1960s and it kind of is, like the hairstyle is and the hat is, except it's like 69 versus 62 or something. So yes, they did wear pillbox hats like that and they wore hair like that, sort of, but it's kind of like completely different styles and different edges of the decade. So for example, a hairstyle like that could be worn by a teenager in 1967. Why would you wear a hat like that if you were a teenager? You know what I mean? So again, after 60s, it's kind of way easier to style it because there were so many trends that you can basically get right. Oh, 100 years of dresses. That could be interesting. No, what is this? Should I just point out everything that's wrong with this look or should I just move on? The dress is too short, the dress is too tight, it shouldn't be fitting like this around the waist especially. I can't even see the shoes but I can guess they're wrong. Yes they are, they actually are. <laughs> wow. Of course there is fringe down there that shouldn't be there because no one ever had fringe because it was expensive. The shoes are great, they're looking really cool except they're modern. And no one would wear sandals in 1920s. This is so wrong, this is so wrong. What is wrong with your hair? What is she doing? I mean, I get a silk satin kind of thing, but it's too short. If it's supposed to be an evening dress, it should cover, it should be like floor length with a long train, see? See? They know what I'm talking about. They're just not doing it. And the hair is tragic. It's really bad. And you can see this one piece that became undone and it's kind of like hanging loose. Why did I never get the beehive right? It always looks like a kind of elongated skull or something. It's always too small. Like, make it as wide as the head. 1980s. Okay, so they got, they got the dress kind of right. Even though the pattern looks really modern, I don't think it's an original dress from the era. And the hair is kind of weird, like it will work better for 19... For earlier <laughs> decades. 1990s. That's a modern dress, isn't it? It doesn't look 1990s. The hair looks kind of modern too. But you got the makeup right. And the shoes, no one would pair shoes like that with a dress like this in 1990s. I don't think so, unless you got a proof. No, no, she's wearing sandals. Hi, so basically what happened is I somehow managed to delete one of uh, the recordings in which I was summing up the whole thing and basically ending the video. As you can tell, I am not 
feeling fantastic right now, but I'll try and end this video anyway. So why did I do all this? Why did I um, judge other people's work? And why did I feel the need to point out every single inaccuracy they did? <coughs> mainly because I'm hoping this would improve. Like, mainly because I'm hoping people would start to notice things that are wrong about these videos because I'm so tired of, of seeing comments like you see something that's clearly not historically accurate and the comments are like, oh, I wish I lived in the 1920s. And I'm like, you have no clue, because this is not what 1920s looked like. And first of all, I wish people watching those videos kind of knew they can't believe everything that's shown there and they kind of have to check the facts all the time. And also, I wish that the creators of those videos, if they ever somehow managed to stumble upon this video, which is quite unlikely to be honest, that they would feel the need to improve their work because it's such a great idea and it's such a simple way to teach people about fashion history but it's so easy to just make it not that good <laughs> so i hope that's clear i hope you don't hate me too much and if you do there are plenty of other channels you can watch <laughs> no just kidding don't hate me oh so i'm gonna go and grab some tea and see you in the next video which i have no idea when it's gonna be